Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com. You're joining me on board good old narrowboat Tilly for another episode of the Dan Brown Monologues where I pluck a random topic out of the stainless steel pan of random topics. If you want your topic suggestions for me to talk about placed in here then please do leave those in the comments below. But for now, let's give them a mix up, put this above head height and well choose a random topic. So today we will go for... Ah, now this is going to be a fun topic. The, the actual sheet says Boat vs Apocal, which basically is short for how would narrowboat life fare if you had to live it through the apocalypse? So basically it's the end of the world and you're on a boat. Is that going to end well or not? Now, this is something that I added in after me and my friends were having a prolonged conversation on this topic, and I thought, you know what, there's some really great points come up here that could be quite interesting and amusing to talk about. So, we will assume in this case that it's an apocalypse that's left, basically, the world relatively intact, but you're like the last person on Earth, that sort of like desolation and you might run into just pockets of different people and little groups trying to form societies in different places around the country or the world. So that's the world that we're talking about because if you were talking about a zombie apocalypse or some sort of like creatures coming and trying to get you then obviously on a boat even trying to speed away and really floor it on the narrowboat. You're not going to be making much of a getaway very far, very quickly. So we want to remove the element of people chasing you because that would make a very short video, um, as it would be. So there's some sort of demons released from the sky who are coming to get you. Is boat life going to fare well? Well, no, because if you're on a boat travelling at about four miles an hour or flooring it and maybe getting up to six or seven miles an hour, which is unheard of, then you're not going to last long in that scenario. Um, but if you were, for example, one of the last people on Earth and you happen to be on a boat, I think it would be quite a handy thing, depending on the boat, obviously. But let's let's build this scenario now. So I'm the last person there is, as far as I know, on Earth. I've got my little boat, Tilly, and that's fine, and I could tootle about and what have you, and that would be great. But you would have, obviously, the pressing need for food and stuff like that. So you'd want to be travelling, and this is where I think that boats and motorhomes or RVs or whatever you want to call them, even uh, touring caravans, stuff like that. I think that a mobile object or vehicle that could act as a self-sustained sort of little ecosystem to live in would be very handy, whether that was a canal boat or, like I say, a motorhome on the road, and being able to just move around. Now, it may not be as convenient to move a boat around in the apocalypse as it would to hop in a motorhome and blast down to the nearest town and raid it for supplies, but you could still do that. And what I think the benefit of a boat in an apocalypse situation would be, and I would say that the first thing I would do in that situation would be take another boat, like a bigger boat that could have more stuff, hold more supplies and basically load it up with as much clean water and just fill it with as much dried food and stuff as I possibly could. And the size of the boat wouldn't matter too much in terms of the living space because that would really be like having space to relax and calm down would be one of your last worries. It would be like a bigger boat that's got massive solar panels and everything on it so it can constantly keep itself powered, just fill it with clean water, long life food and wood to burn when it gets to the end of the year and the winter sets in. So I would say Tilly might not be my boat of choice for the apocalypse, but a boat, and we're sticking with a boat just for the sake of this argument of this video, I'm not trying to go... Boats are the best thing ever, and everybody needs to get one in case the end of the world happens. Um, this is just purely for fun. So that would be my first thing. Get the boat stocked up with supplies, and then travel. And start heading towards like the cities, maybe, or bigger towns, and just collect as many supplies and things like that as you could. Try and learn and read up on every possible naturally occurring mushroom and fruit, and everything that you could possibly think of in terms of actually self-sustaining, eating in the wild and that sort of natural 
old style before society living because that obviously would be what you'd be going back to but like I say the reason I think that a boat would be quite handy is because you could have like it solar powered and you could siphon off diesel from different boats that you passed and that as you went to keep obviously your own diesel supplies up along with your wood and all that stuff I'm sure you'd be getting goodness knows how many bags of coal to last you however long into the future off all the boats you'd be passing if they if you were the last person on earth so you'd carry on like that or this is how i envision it going and basically the reason i think that a boat would be quite good is because you would be going down the canal in the middle of nowhere for a lot of places so if there were like predators out there or other bands of people traveling around looking for like victims to come across and people they could rob and that you would be going through places that, unless somebody else was also doing it by boat, you wouldn't want to walk down a towpath instead of a road, or you wouldn't want to walk or try and go down the canals instead of just to the nearest cities in the shortest routes with the best possible surface underfoot that you could possibly find. So just by being on the canals and being in those slightly remote places... That would give you that sort of protection of just obscurity, I suppose, that people aren't likely to be going down there thinking, oh yeah, let's go and see if anyone's on boats and we'll go and get them. So that's my first thing. I'm just going to have a drink and then we'll return for the second more interesting part of how far would you actually get and how long would the canals themselves actually last? So the real question mark in this apocalypse scenario wouldn't be around could you sustain a little boat and get supplies and all that sort of stuff. I think the question would be, if nobody was looking after the canals and maintaining them, how long could they possibly last? Because even here on the really super busy Langoflin Canal, where it gets unbelievably packed over the ho uh, the summer holidays, and it's very busy just in general, apart from the real winter months, I suppose, and even then it gets so overgrown and there's parts of it that are so shallow and boats get stuck and it's... It's unbelievable to really see how a canal that's used as much as the Langothlin can also be in quite an overgrown sort of state where you can see how much in huge stretches of canal, like the Montgomery Canal, for example, that sees far fewer boats go down it. Sometimes there's parts of it, if you travel down there in the summer, where the overgrowth on one side touches the boat on the left-hand side or right-hand side, and it also, from the other side of the canal, touches both sides of the boat. So you're going down a channel where you've got, like, reeds and greenery that's grown up, like, to take most of the canal. So you've just got, like, about a seven-foot gap, not even that, to go through in the middle. So you imagine if there's no boats whatsoever using any of the canals, you're going to start to overgrow like that to an unbelievable level, and with nobody trying to cut back extra bits of the trees hanging over, and if you have a bad winter and all of the trees come down like they did that famous time on my first ever winter, link in the description to that video if you want to see unbelievable, amazing boat scenery in the snow. It's just fascinating the first winter i spent on board was just unbelievable so check the link there to see some incredible snowy canal scenery um but of course that would basically be game over so you'd have to take like a chainsaw with you just in case you came up against these places but it would be so hard to remove some obstructions from the canal by yourself in terms of the huge trees and that and this is all assuming that none of it just breaches because if you have a canal breach, then obviously that's, that's game over for your boat travel in terms of there's nobody there to fix it unless you suddenly can do the work of goodness knows how many people and operate all these different bits of super heavy machinery and fix the canal and then work everything out to get the water to flow down and fill it all up properly and not overflow and break again. So that would be the biggest issue. And especially when you think of things like locks that have got loads of mechanical parts and these lift bridges and stuff. And the amount of rust in and just basically you imagine leaving the canals unchecked and you only have to look like I say at something like the Montgomery Canal that is used quite a lot over the summer really compared to no boats at all using it and how overgrown and how sort of shallow that gets and again there's examples almost of what an abandoned well there are examples of what a canal would get like if abandoned and it's not pretty basically and that is where you'd have the difficulty and I think you'd end up finding yourself get to 
a lock somewhere that was broken and you couldn't work it or it was seized up and so you'd then have to walk downstream try and find another boat to get on on the other side of the locks fetch that up to the locks and then drag all your supplies down and around onto the new boat and then carry on your trip down that way and this is all assuming that you either can find the keys magically to all these boats or figure out how to start them up and hotwire them all as you go and equally get in and out of the boat without any sort of chaos going on and endlessly having a burglar alarm go off for five hours a day while you're traveling and that sort of stuff so i think that the boat idea and the self-sustaining like you say with a motorhome having something where you could have a mobile home where you can heat yourself you can sleep you can have water you can have fire you can have actual power and stuff coming from solar panels for anything that you might need going forwards obviously you're not going to need the internet or cameras or anything like that so really I suppose the solar power is just there for lighting and water pumps and stuff to keep the boat itself running and apart from that I'd say your biggest difficulty is the actual canal itself which would soon be in all sorts of states of disrepair and you'd probably find yourself walking huge distances to find the next boat to get on but because the canal does go to major cities you would be able to take it in and get these supplies and get all like raid the little village shops as you're going past to just basically grab everything you can and take it down to the canal and yeah really I just thought I mean me and my friends talked about this endlessly coming up with different like pros and cons basically and I just thought I'd share some of them with you because they just thought it might be an entertaining amusing thing to consider anyway I suppose on that note we will wrap things up say like I say if you've got topics you won't go in in the stainless steel pan of random topics then please do give me a shout out and leave the co leave them in the comments below and um, feel free to check out my normal boating videos about boat life and just generally the canal and scenery and documentaries all sorts of stuff like that feel free to add me on facebook and all that and also check out my short boaty books for the kindle in the description below till the next time though keep it survive worthy keep it boat worthy and of course farewell